When it comes to toy innovation, the hits just keep on coming for Wowee. That's our text to nation. I'm Fred Fishkin, and we're happy to have with us Sydney Wiseman, Vice President of Brand Development and Creative Strategy. Hi, Sydney. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Uh, now, here we are diving into another holiday season, and one of your cool innovations that is on a lot of wish lists is the Got to Glow Fairy Finder. Tell us about it. Yeah, so the Got to, I, I probably say this about every toy I work on, but I think this is my favorite toy ever. Um, basically, it's a magical jar that allows you to catch virtual fairies. So I could even show you, maybe a little hard to see with the lights, but so you turn it on and the last fairy that I caught is going to be in my jar right now. So what you simply do is you double press the middle button and it goes into fairy finder mode. And now I open the lid and my jar is literally searching for fairies. So I can move it around where you go, how you play with it. Like if I turn it upside down, if I shake it, if I do all different things, it will affect the fairy that you catch. And it's, it, it's still thinking. So in, it's okay. So a fairy just flew in. You see the lights. If they're green. So I know I caught some sort of green fairy. Close the lid. Oh, <laughs> we caught an upside down fairy. <laughs> so there's all these really fun fairies that you could catch. And then you can do really fun things like give her a hug if you hold down on these buttons. And that's how you hug your fairy. Um, so you could feed her also if you press this one. And she's eating some candy. <laughs> So, so a bunch of different ways you could play. Uh, there's over 40 fairies to find in every jar, actually. And there's three different colored jars that have all different fairies in them. And if you find one in one jar and one in another, you actually could trade fairies jar to jar. So you can trade with your friends to find the entire collection of all of them. So sounds like really great fun and, and captures the imagination of kids. So is there a backstory of how this was developed? A backstory. Um, yes. Yeah, so we saw like, obviously, wow, we, we have so much innovation in tech and basically we, our R and D team showed this concept of just lights, what you could do with lights and the magic of lights. And instantly was like, Oh, fairies, <laughs> like, and like those fireflies, the kids are always catching. And there's something really magical about searching for things. I think something that we really want to try and do, especially talking to parents is screen time is obviously necessary and not going anywhere, but I think parents are looking for solutions to kind of get their kids off their phones a little bit. And so what parents love most about the fairy jar is not only does it distract their kids from screens, but it's actually getting them to move around and literally take the jar and go and find. And that's really what we wanted to try and achieve while we were deciding how do we create this toy. And so when we saw the technology of the lights mixed with getting kids to roam around. We we're like, oh, we could use lights to kind of guide children to finding fairies. And lo and behold, the God of Glow Fairy Finder. Would you liken this at all to the uh, virtual pet experience that uh, a lot of people uh, grew up with even, right? Yeah, it's really interesting as we're seeing people who who is buying the God of Glow Fairy Finder. So we've actually had a few people are referring to it as the toy from TikTok. We've had a few videos that have gone viral on TikTok <laughs> with the fairy jar, like millions. Like, like I put up a video, it has two and a half million views. I, don't, not, I have no following, nothing, but yeah, it really resonates. And what we're seeing in the older audience is that it's exactly that. It's that virtual pet find, the virtual pet users back in the day who feel nostalgia and see this and they're like, oh my God, this is the virtual pet of the future. And actually seeing how we're being so compared to those types of pets is really helping to stem where we're taking future product development. And yeah, although I can't say much right now, there's a lot more in the hopper coming out with respect to maybe some lower price points and really exploring how we become the fairy virtual pet forever. What's the age range this is intended for? So we Par parents always look for that on a box. Yeah, totally. I would say that it's great for Really the sweet spot I would say is probably four to nine, but like four to eight. But what we're seeing is that kids play very differently at all different ages. So even giving it to a three-year-old, the lights are so 
captivating that they'll just walk around as long as someone helps them get into the fairy finder mode they're like walking around being like oh my god there's fairies everywhere you know and they really believe in the magic of seeing the fairies all around them and then the older kids what we're seeing is that even like as old as like eight nine ten they're methodically trying to find every fairy on the list so they know there's a hundred to find how are they going to find all of them? Are they going to trade with their friends? You know, so for them, it's more of a challenge to find all the fairies versus the younger kids. It's like, wow, there's fairies in my room. Even, even when I don't have the jar, we've had kids that have told us that before bed, they ask to catch fairies. And that's like their bedtime, like, like to go before they go to bed, like their routine. And then in the morning they'll go to their parents saying, mom, I saw fairies in my room during the night. Can I have my fairy finder to go get them? <laughs> and it's really sweet that so all ages. And then I think even the virtual pet makes it so that I'm seeing on TikTok. So even on the video that went viral, everyone is writing, I'm 30 and I want this. I'm 45 and I want this. I'm 22 and I just ordered three of them. <laughs> so really wide spanning right now. <laughs> That's great. So an another big hit for you. And, you know, of course, every kid you know, we'll see you on TikTok and, and say, boy, I want to grow up to be her. <laughs> what a job. No one can believe it. People write me and be like, you wait, you make toys for a living? Like, that's what you do? It's like, yeah, it's fun. Well, there's also plenty of innovation behind Wowie's new pop to play line. Yeah. Tell us about the concept here. So the concept of pop to play is basically we we source this cardboard called Strongfold. It's We patented it as actually. And basically it's this cardboard that is like indestructible for children. It can hold up to 50 pounds, like like a hundred percent tested through and through. And basically it folds flat. And when you expand it in a matter of minutes, you have these big play sets in your room. I do have one. I could try and show you. I'm not sure how if the move movement of the camera is going to be. You want me to try? Sure. Okay, we'll try. You're coming. You're going to come with me for a second. Yeah. So, this is a pop to play slide so it's flat okay so completely flat and basically this down a little bit. so all you literally do is you open it up and you pop up the sides and you pop them down here and now you literally have a slide in your house i'm like i wouldn't recommend this to everyone but like it's really big enough that you could go down and then when you're done, the best part, fold, fold, and you literally both sides and you can literally put it away in a second. It stores under couches, it stores everywhere. So quite innovative, not in a electronic technology kind of way, but definitely wowie innovation at its finest. <laughs> in terms of for people who live, uh, you know, in everybody's space constrained when it comes to kids and the toys all over the place. So having something like that, that doesn't take up a big part of a room, if you have an indoor slide, uh, and, and there are other, there are other things too, and you have a new partnership yeah. with this. Tell me about it. So we have a partnership with Mattel that we're super excited about specifically Barbie we're starting with. So we have launching actually on this week, <laughs> we have this Barbie Playhouse, which, so imagine what I just did with the slide. We're actually taking that concept and applying it to even larger scale play sets. So a full Barbie house that is everything Barbie. And again, it stores flat and in a matter of minutes, you can fold it up, you can unfold it and have this massive Barbie dream house in your living room and then put it away at the end of the day. Uh, we actually, in that skew, there is, pop to play furniture for your dolls, which is so fun. And then given the response we've been having to the slide, so the slide has been just constantly selling out throughout the year. It's really an amazing product. We are taking that and applying the Barbie license to that as well. So there will be a Barbie slide coming out next in spring, which we're super excited about. We have a car too. What, what else is in the line? So in the line right now, we have a car, a pink car, a blue car. We have two slides, a pink slide and a yellow slide. We have a playhouse that's a generic playhouse. We have a castle, which is amazing. It's, uh, it's this like huge castle that, that pops up as well. And we have the Barbie dream house. 
And then we have a kitchen nursery. So it's this two way role play. So on one side, it's a kitchen. On the other side, it's a nursery. And again, completely folds flat, put it away at the end of the day. And we have this farmer's market kind of little ice cream shop for creative role play. That's just terrific. And what's, what's the pricing like on these? So they, they range. So the slide, which is our like classic item, I think the slide is going to be really evergreen for us, is a $29.99 retail. The cars are $24.99. And then the play sets start um, at $49.99 up to $69.99, I believe, or $59.99, I believe, for the Barbie one. So a lot more affordable than uh, the alternatives that are out there and saves you money, saves you space. So exactly. I guess that's that's the tagline for it. Exactly. For that. Another in-demand toy line that you have is called My Squishy Little Dumplings. Here we go. They're really cute. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> these little guys, so their cheeks light up, they tip their head lights up, but everyone's favorite part when you squeeze their cheeks. <laughs> their bodies pop out and it changes their personalities. So there are these little characters that have over 50 sounds and animations and you can play with them. You can throw them. They know that when they're being tossed and they basically there's, so we're starting with dumplings, but then we have exclusives sprinkled throughout the market. So we have this cotton candy cloud, which is a Walmart exclusive in the U S and then one of my personal favorites who is coming out soon. He's still, I think he, he was a pre-order and then he sold out of the pre-order, but this marshmallow, <laughs> when you squeeze his cheeks, Mel the marshmallow, his body pops out, he has a little flame on his body and he's just this like rainbow <laughs> marshmallow head with a little burn mark, obviously, because everyone likes their marshmallows a little toasted. And yeah, those also have been on a lot of the hot toy lists and just continuing to grow that brand and we have an amazing partnership with Nickelodeon. They're doing the content. We turn them into a band called The Squish. There's original music on YouTube and on Spotify and on all actually all the streaming platforms. And we're just excited to see where that goes as well. Maybe maybe a serious drama called Squish Games. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea as a parody. That is, I'm, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> so tell tell me a little bit about the, what goes into to coming up with ideas. I mean, it's not like you're dreaming these at night with a notepad or, or by the bed <laughs> or like, is it brainstorming sessions? <laughs> like, yes. So we do do brainstorming sessions. I think every, the way that we, it's, it's interesting. We're really like discussing this process now. And in terms of like even scaling ideas, cause obviously not short of ideas, but, um, I think what really happens is we're all always looking at what resonates, whether it's toy or whether it's just even things that we see in the media or social media, like what are people gravitating towards? What on TikTok is going viral? What has an element of viral to it? And then how could we learn from that and adapt that and bring it back to toy so that there's something that's unique and different? I think what's really cool about Wowie always is that we really like pride on being completely original. And I think what's fun and where we're going is that we used to think that original, not think it was just our way, but we used to think originality meant batteries and high tech through motion and motors and sounds. And I think what well, we're seeing is that- big into robotic. Yeah, something. Yeah. exactly. Big into robots. And I think us having been big into robots has made us amazing at having this live, this breadth of technology and this library of what we are able to, to do. But I think what we're seeing now is that a lot of the magic in toys just comes from the storytelling and like, what's the movie in your hand, you know, like with the dumpling, not that high tech, but special because there's something unique and different. And instead of it, you're playing with a toy, you're playing with a character. It's like, I took him right off the screen and he's in my hand now and he feels still real here. And he feels like my friend or the fairy jar, like just what was the movie of catching the fairy that brings magic to a child? And then even pop to play, no batteries, no nothing. It's how do we solve a problem that parents are facing through innovation that's never been seen before? So I think even moving forward for next year, we're getting into all new categories. Like we just announced a partnership with GameFam, um, which is they're a lead developer of Roblox games and we are doing a, a license. We took the license for their Twilight Daycare game and we're coming up with a line of collectible babies. And again, not 
no tech in the dolls, but innovation in the sense of you will be able to scan your babies into your Roblox game and play with the babies in Twilight Daycare and all of these really cool and exciting new ways of thinking that I think we're looking at how do we apply our wowie way to all different categories across the toy shelf. Well, you know, we've all been hearing about the supply constraints out there. Parents are concerned. Am I going to be able to get what what the when, what my kid wants for for the holidays and so how difficult is it right now in the industry and for Huawei? Um, honestly, it's a real real thing for sure. We are feeling it tremendously. I think we are very we have wonderful relationships with our retailers and they've been really helpful in guiding us in terms of how to kind of navigate through all of these issues that are rising that are rising. I think the ones that we felt it the, the most pop to play, for example, just the where cargo and pricing is concerned, the amount that we're able to fit on a ship is obviously significantly less than something like a dumpling. So importing those become quite expensive. So that's been something that we've been trying to navigate. The, the shortage of chips is also a really real thing and screens. My cousins always joke who I work with Michael and Andrew, they always joke that I picked the worst time to make this toy because, okay, there's the biggest screen shortage in the world. And um, we were actually, we're capped for this year in terms of, and, and we well planned for a, a hot toy, thankfully. So kids, there will be toys for kids at Christmas, a million percent, but um, we we will sell out. For, we, honestly, Amazon has sold out already and we're just watching this happen as it becomes hotter and hotter and more talked about. It's starting to go fast, but we definitely made sure to provision to have enough product on shelf through till as close to Christmas as we could get. So the advice to parents is truly buy early, yeah. whatever, whatever it is you're looking for in the toy world. Right? True, and, truly buy early. And other, and other stuff too. <laughs> so yeah, everything. Yeah. That's really so for more info, folks can go to wowie.com, I suppose is the best place. Yeah, there's wow. We have we're all over the place now. So we have wowie.com where, where that's a lot of information. Instagram, we have at wowie. TikTok, we have the God of Glow Fairies has an amazing TikTok channel. Highly recommend checking it out. And then, I mean, I'm don't know. I have a lot of toy videos, but <laughs> my personal Sid Wiseman TikTok account as well that has tons of fun videos and what we're working on and stuff behind the scenes. So, yeah. Terrific. Sydney Wiseman, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you so much. It was so fun. Now this. It takes a lot of listening to build a better radio. And that's just what the folks at Sea Crane have done. Bob Crane and his crew, nestled among the rivers and tallest trees in the world in Fortuna, California, have made a habit of listening to their customers. And that's just what they've done in building the CC Skywave SSB, the Swiss Army knife of portable radios. For everyday listening to AM or FM in the yard or patio or on the nightstand without having to drain a mobile phone battery, it's a great companion. But it is also a companion equipped for NOAA weather information and alerts that can be life-saving. You can listen to FEMA and Coast Guard transmissions too. Beyond all of that, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. It's compact, easy to take with you, and built to last. The CC Skywave SSB. Click on the link at textonation.com.